Obtaining a secure fixing for a heavy object in a plasterboard wall is an incredibly difficult thing to do, but in today's video I'm going to be trialling a product that I think is a stronger plasterboard fixing than anything I've ever encountered before. But it also works in plywood, hardboard, lath and plaster and pretty much any material between 3 and 75mm thick with suitable length screws. The reason it's difficult to fix into plasterboard is because it's an inherently fragile substance. If you can't rely on stud work or the brick wall behind, you've basically got to fix into a substance that is brittle to say the least. So you want something to open up as wide as possible behind the plasterboard and this has been the challenge for manufacturers for the last 20-30 years. But today's fixing does something a little bit different. Because if you look at the fixings that I've tried over the last seven videos on my channel, you'll see me talking about the highly popular Fisher UX6, which I use a lot in my day job, the Fisher PDA, which is also a very good capable fixing, the Fisher Duo Power, which is their fantastic new universal fixing that I cannot recommend highly enough. You then got the grip it fixing, which mm, I'm not a big fan of, if I'm going to be honest, for reasons that you'll see in my other videos. You've got the blade fixer fixing that I featured in one of my recent videos. The wall anchor, which is one of my favourite heavy duty fixings. The toggle fixings, which are stronger than the wall anchor, but have the downside that if you remove the bolts, the fixing falls in down the back of the wall. And then you've got this monster from G-Fix. Just look at the size of that back plate. Why am I trialling this fixing today? Because recently the inventor contacted me, commented under one of my other plasterboard fixings videos, asked me if I'd be prepared to try out the product. And there was something about this that really interested me, so I said yes, and so he sent me a couple of packs. I'm not being paid for this video, but I did get these free of charge. Then anyone who sends me something like this knows that I am going to be honest and objective with you about whatever I'm sent, regardless of whether it was sent for free or not. Now, I do occasionally get criticised by people saying it's so easy for you because you can see the back of the plasterboard so it's not a proper re representative test. So in today's video I'm going to make it as true to life as possible by filming everything from the front of the plasterboard, not looking behind because I'll be filming behind with my smartphone. So that's enough talking, I'm going to go through the product now, show you how it works, and then afterwards I'm going to chat a bit about why I think this is so different to the other fixings on the market. So, in the pack you get four of the curved parts of the fixings and then you get four of these circular plugs. You get a couple of lengths of blue cord and a pack of screws. You need to drill a 25mm hole and you can either do it with a core drill like this or a flat wood drill bit like this. You then drill a 25mm hole with the centre exactly where you want the final fixing to be. You then thread the cord through the fixing and through the circular plug like this. You then thread the circular part of the fixing into the wall. You can decide at this point whether you want the fixing to be horizontal or vertical depending on what load you are fixing to the wall. And then you push the plug into the wall. Now the great thing about these blue cords is they automatically line up the holes on the plug with, with the holes on the curved fixing behind which is what you need later on. I'm then going to insert the larger screw into the centre and at this point you want to pull tightly on the blue cord and at the same time screw that in but not over tighten it. We can now remove the blue cord and insert the two smaller screws because these are the screws that are going to be holding the plug in place. This. You can see that's pulled the plasterboard back a bit because this is a slightly damp plasterboard I've had in the garage for a while. At this point you then remove the larger screw because it's this screw that you're then using to fix whatever it is you're fixing to the wall.
Now I've got to say that was incredibly simple and let's have a look at what we've got behind the plasterboard. So at the back we've got this wonderful incredibly strong fixing that's just spread out behind the plasterboard. I am seriously impressed with that. Not only is this the strongest fixing I've ever used, I also think it's one of the easiest to fit. Now those of you who've watched a few of my plasterboard fixings videos will know that I don't like drilling a large hole because as I showed you earlier on, plasterboard is a brittle substance so you want as small a hole as possible to preserve the strength. That is why I'm not massively keen on the grip it fixings because you have to drill quite a large hole for the comparatively small blade that opens up behind. So yes, the circular plug is quite chunky at 25 millimeters, but when you look at the size of the curved part of the fixing in relation to it, it really isn't a problem because the curved part at 120 millimeters wide is just so massive. The downside of having a wide plug like this, if there is a downside, is that if you're fixing, say, curtain brackets to the wall like this, you are gonna see a little bit of the plug behind the bracket. However, this wouldn't be that obtrusive, particularly if you painted it the same color as the wall. And for most applications, like for example, TV brackets, you wouldn't see a plug this size anyway. So as I said, you can position the curved part of the fixing either horizontally, which is probably your best bet for one of those TV brackets, or vertically, if for example, you're installing a curtain bracket. And the great thing about the curved part of the fixing is that it has these teeth that you can just see there, which are designed to penetrate into the plasterboard when you pull the cord tight, so that the curved part does not spin around when you're driving the first screw tight. So you can see here just how the G-Fix dwarfs the competition in terms of the size of the support behind the plasterboard. Even my previous heavy duty favorites, the wall anchor and the toggle, look um, quite frankly pathetic when lined up next to the G-Fix. But it doesn't end there. There are a couple of other benefits of this fixing that I promised I'd run through at the start of the video. When you're trying to choose the right fixing for your wall, one of the things that can really hamper you is the amount of space you've got to play with behind the plasterboard. Now, if you can screw into the brickwork behind and you're putting something really heavy like a TV up, it is always an idea to screw into the brickwork. And you would have seen my recent core fix video where I show you a plug that's capable of doing that. But a lot of the time you just don't have this option. And you can be really hampered by that space behind the plasterboard because a lot of fixings, whether it's a toggle or particularly the wall anchor, sometimes need a gap of, of as much as 60 millimeters to open up. Although you can admittedly get lower profile wall anchors that are 40 millimeters in length. But with the exception of the grip it, which admittedly has an impressively low profile behind the plasterboard, most fixings need a reasonable amount of space to open. But that's what makes the G-Fix all the more remarkable because in spite of the size of this fixing, it only needs a 30 millimeter cavity in order to open, although you do admittedly have to force it in a little bit. The second thing I love about this fixing that massively differentiates it from most of the competition is that you can fix into the thinnest of hardboard or ply. And this is good, for example, in caravans, most of which are made from a hardboard with a decorative finish. And of course, hollow core doors. Most other fixings have a five to 10 millimeter collar, which is designed to take a minimum sort of plasterboard type thickness. But with the G-Fix, provided you're prepared to slightly trim down the circular part of the fixing, you can then fix into the thinnest of surfaces like this three millimeter hardboard. And the other point to note is that the G-Fix can also be used where you've got insulated plasterboard. Though I should point out that other fixings like the Fisher PD-8, the Fisher UX6 and the Fisher Duo Power, amongst others, are also capable of forcing their way open, even in insulated plasterboard. Two other points I should mention before I wrap up. The first one, the eagle-eyed amongst you would have noticed when I just showed you this example, where you've got a bracket with a few screws quite close to each other, a lot of traditional fixings, like wall anchors, and toggle fixings are gonna to leave you in a spot of bother because you are not gonna be able to fix 
into those holes. But as you can see here, the brilliant thing about this fixing, which is going to have massive applications in the sort of DIY and the construction sector, where you, you need to put holes close to each other on a wall, you can actually place another hole right up close to your original hole, and you don't even have to pilot it because the screw simply self taps itself through the curved part of the fixing, leaving you with an incredibly strong fixing. The final point to make is that vinyze or coach bolts which have a much wider diameter thread than the original centre fixing screw can be inserted into the hole that was occupied by the centre fixing screw in the insert plug and then self tap into the back plate in exactly the same way as the extra screw did a few moments ago. So what do we say in conclusion on this fixing? Well, other than getting a few free products to try out and obviously doing this video, I've got nothing to gain from promoting this product, but I've got to say, and I hope this comes across as objectively and impartially as it's meant to, this is the strongest plasterboard fixing I've ever experimented with. You might be sometimes constrained by the size of the center plug, in terms of it being wider than whatever it is you're screwing to the wall. But for things like TVs, heavy curtains, but also heavy radiators, tower rails, cupboards, mirrors, the list goes on. And also more lightweight applications because it's so easy to fit, I suspect you'll be using this more often than not. And let's not forget about the other surfaces you can fix into like plywood, chipboard, hardboard, lath and plaster. I've really struggled getting decent fixings into lath and plaster in my day job and all this with standard screws, not bolts. Price-wise, at $8.95 for four and $14.95 for eight, it's not cheap, but then products like this that fulfill a need that no other products on the market can do are not gonna be the cheapest in the bag. I suspect also the price reflects the fact that it hasn't been on the market for that long and it still has a reasonably limited exposure. Load-wise, there's a few visuals coming up on the screen now. Uh, you can find some videos on the GFIX website and on, on their YouTube page, which show them sitting on shelves that they've put up with this fixing uh, and piling bricks on uh, shelves. You're sort of looking at somewhere between 70 and 270 kilograms, depending on whether the load you're exerting is a tensile cantilever or shear force, and also how far away from the wall the force is being applied. But suffice to say, if you've got something really heavy that needs to go on a plasterboard wall, this is gonna be, in my opinion, better than anything else on the market at the moment. So anyway, I hope you found today's video useful. If you have, please click on the like button below. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. Subscribing is so important to me because apart from anything else, it shows that I'm doing something right and spending a lot of time making these videos. Thanks everyone, see you soon.